So, dear René, dear uh, Peter, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I know that is uh, actually there are still a lot of people. I will really try to go very fast through all the indication, contraindication, and some technical aspect on my track clip. So you see the system here. The system is a percutaneous system, catheter-based transvenous system that is tr introduced through the femoral vein. It's a steerable 24 French uh, guiding catheter, which is this style. And then we have a clip delivery system that is this style that you can steer bound and, uh, and advance in order to reach the, uh, the, the mitral valve once, uh, once you penetrate the left atrium. So it needs a transeptal puncture, a precise transeptal puncture. Uh, and once you are in the left atrium, you can go down and we'll show you that. And you see here the clips that is what remains in the patient as a ventricular part and an atrial part, and the, the, the leaflets is intended to be grasped between these two parts, between the arterial part. And, uh, and actually, it's a new device. It uh, was introduced in clinical uh, treatment just uh, four years uh, ago, and uh, we are almost at 10,000. Honestly, it's, it's 9,700 patients. will be at 10,000 in a few, in few weeks. So it's already a, a device that uh, shows some, uh, some data. I will show you very fast how it works. Here you see once you introduce the, uh, the, the clip, the delivery system through the catheter. So the catheter at present is already in the, in the left atrium. You go through the left atrium. Everything is, is based on imaging uh, with uh, transesophageal echo. So it's guided with transesophageal echo and uh, X-ray. You see you steer down to the, to the mitral valve looking at the transesophageal echo. You can turn uh, the device. You aim to reach the lesion that you want to try. You spend some time in putting exactly the spot where we want to, uh, to fix uh, this lesion. And we will go over which lesion we can treat. And once you are happy, you can close the clip. If you are not happy, you reopen uh, the clip and you can replace. Now, the patient selection, I think this is the most important part. So the technical aspects are, are important, but really the patient selection is where we have to spend some time. So there are some patient criteria and there are echocardiographic criteria. And this is the way how we have to select the patient. First, the patient criteria, so clinical criteria, and second, the echo criteria, and not the, the other way around as often happened in medicine. So uh, patient criteria, the patient has to have a severe, uh, uh, severe MR and has to be symptomatic. The patient has to be at high risk for surgery or so-called inoperable and the definition if it's a patient is at high risk should be done in a, in a really hard team consensus where the, the surgeon and in particular surgeon that are, there are uh, performing mitral valve surgery are really integrity of the, of the discussion. Then patient with severe heart failure, so with ejection fraction of less than, than 30% uh, percent or se severe dilated uh, ventricle. In patient with no responder after CRT, and here I think we have to wait at least three months after CRT to say that they are not responder. And then in patient with severe MR, after TAVI procedure, and these patients are actually increasing. Then we have the echocardiographic criteria. The visibility of the mitral valve is, uh, is extremely important. We don't see the valve. It's not like in the surgical theater when you operate and you reconstruct the valve in a surgical way that you see the valve, that you can really appreciate. We have to use the TE, so it's an indirect method if you want, but you need to have optimal imaging quality. And then you, you, you have to be able to predict that you are able to grasp both leaflets with the clip. So our selection, what we did till now, and this reflects actually most of the center, is in degenerative mitral valve disease, so in prolapse, in flail, and so on, focus only in the elderly, in very elderly patient, or in iris patient. And in functional uh, uh, MR, uh, this is uh, probably an increasing number of patients 
is a present 50 to 60 percent from the patient that we are treating now, in, of course, in patients with an ejection fraction of less than 30. And why in the generative MR we, we focus in the elderly? You know that the surgery of the mitral valve, which is the gold standard, I want to, to state that, in patients with severe MR, has excellent result in, in, in good hands. If an, a surgeon has a good experience, has excellent result. But still, if we look at the data in the elderly, you see in the, in the STS the database, uh, in patients over 75, the mortality, the intraoperative mortality, the operative mortality, which is till the exit of the hospital, is 17%. So it's not the, the mortality of 1% to 3% that we always propagate in the younger patient. Uh, similarly, if you look at the, uh, the two larger centers with the largest experience in mitral valve reconstruction, and this was a publication a few years ago, so Mount Sinai in New York, together with Leipzig, you see that for the repair, and these are the mortality data at one month, for the repair is 5.1 in this elderly patient, and 90 days is almost reached 20% for repair, and obviously for replacement is much higher. If we compare, and this is not a comparison study, but just to show that if we focus in this patient, I think we are doing something correct. If we look at the first 100 patient was published in heart by Daniel Suder from, from Cardiocentro. Uh, the first 100 patients that were treated in, in Switzerland, 54% were older than 75, so it means that we are really looking for this patient. We have an hospital mortality of 1%, a 30 days mortality of 4%, and a 90-day mortality of 7%, and the morbidity extremely low. So mitral clip in selected patients appear to be a, a safe a safe procedure. And if you look in the conclusion of the paper from the Mount Sinai and, 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 and Leipzig group, you see that in the conclusion they also allude that the emerging percutaneous technique may offer a viable alternative to surgery in this patient, because in this patient, in the elderly patient, what we want to achieve is to have optimal uh, quality of life. Just an example in the genital FMR, you see this patient is not the youngest patient that we want to have in, on the table uh, is a patient which is quite small. It's a young, uh, a, a small lady uh, the, which was living at home till the sudden rupture, she, she told, I had a sud sudden pain, chest pain, a rupture of, of the cordae in a prolapse. You see a severe MR. The patient was in the intensive care under the butamine diuretic with acute renal failure. This is not the patient that you want to have uh, on the table for surgery. You see there is no doubt that the MR is uh, severe. You see the flail uh, here in the intracommissural with the cord eruption, no doubt that is severe, uh, the MR. So I think these are one of the patients, um, don't tell me, uh, that we select. And these actually are probably the best patient uh, to treat. You fix the prolapse, you go with the mitra, uh, clip exactly there at the lesion, and this is the, the final result, which is acceptable for, for this patient. You see in the 3D uh, reconstruction, life reconstruction, you see we have a double orifice, so something similar to what Alfieri uh, did surgically. is not in the middle, it's exactly there where the rupture of the cord were. So one of the patients is the elderly patient with a severe MR because of the cord rupture. The second category that I was alluded in the generative patient is patients that are already operated uh, uh, with cardiac surgery. You see a patient that was already operated, a very small flail, you, you even see it here in the ange, a very small flail, a severe MR, these are also, I think, good candidates. If you speak with a surgeon, they say, well, you know, you cannot achieve good result with just one clip. You need to have a ring and a good reconstruction the valve should smile at you. And of course, they say the clip patient doesn't smile, and it's correct. Uh, but what I answer is the patient does. This is the patient that was treated. Taken from the intensive care unit, you still see the stop clock here. The two are two red. One was for diuretics, the other one was for the, the vitamin. I think in this specific patient was a good decision. This is another patient you see, also a similar age category. So in elderly patient with uh, acute MR uh, by degenerative. The second uh, 
uh, disease is, of course, functional. Function MR. And you see this kind of patient. This is a, a younger patient, 60 years old, ejection fraction less than 20 by, uh, this, uh, after a, a myocardial infarction, severe MR, severe pulmonary hypertension. It's not yet ready for, for transplantation. Huge ventricle, 550 ml, huge. This you can also uh, treat it quite, quite good. You see, you almost abolish the, the, the mitral regurgitation in this, uh, this transthoracal uh, echo. You see the decrease, the remodeling that you see in most of the patients, the dramatic reduction in pulmonary, uh, in pulmonary uh, pressure. This patient was actually listed for, for transplant before uh, performing the mitral clip uh, procedure and was removed from the listing after six months because of good results. There are also many no-goes. I think the first no-goes for Mitraclip is the good surgical candidate. A good surgical candidate is a good surgical candidate. Stop. We don't even have to consider this patient. If you are not able to see the valve, like in this case, if you don't see the posterior leaflet, it doesn't make sense to try it because we will not be able to grasp it. Of course, if you have already a stenotic valve, don't try to clip it because it will only worsen it. It will not open it up. If you have a severe cleft or a barrel of disease, a barrel of disease is a surgical, is a surgical disease. There is no, di no discussion. In patients that have moderate to severe aortic stenosis, don't do it. Because when you re reduce the MR, then suddenly the, the aortic stenosis becomes severe. It was already severe before. We didn't realize that. Of course, if you have cardiac thrombi, if you have active endocarditis, it's a no-go. Then we have valvular anatomy, as we, as we say. And if you have a, a leaflet perforation, of course, this will not. And there are some technical issues. If you have really huge atria, this is also something that you cannot good do or if you have a uh, rotation of the axis. There are some predictors after mitral clip. This was also uh, uh, published by Daniel Surder in Art in 2013. And, and I don't know if, yeah, we can barely see. Here is the result after mitral clip. And you see three categories. So the patient that has uh, a, a mild, a very, a very not only trace in the first one, mild and severe uh, mitral regurgitation. So if they live with a severe mitral regurgitation, the hospital, uh, they will have, uh, they will have uh, a, a, worst, a worst outcome. So this is survival. They will have a mortality of about 25 to 30% which is clearly decreased if you have a good, better result. So if you have just three. So the aim of the mitral clip procedure is not leaving the room with a mild to moderate. The aim is to leave in the room with a patient which is adequately treated. So our goal should be to have a reduction to zero or, or maximal one and not to two, as we often heard. And uh, uh, Stefan uh, uh, Tokweiler presented the two years data uh, ye yesterday showing exactly the same. Now, one of the questions is often what happened with this ventricle. Once you close the, the, the mitral valve, if you have, if you have a ventricle that, that, that can really not pump, what happened with this ventricle? This ventricle will go, will go uh, uh, will even decrease. And actually, we show in this paper was published this year in circulation. This is not the case. So the patient, what you do acutely, once you clip the, 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 the valve, you completely or re you really re reduce the volume which is going between the ventricle and the atrium. So you reduce, massively reduce the, the volume overload. You increase a little bit the afterload, of course, but the, the, the reduction of the volume overload is so massive that almost all the ventricle can, can do it. And if a ventricle cannot do it, you can still open it and, and reopen it. You see that actually this is true for the functional and for the degenerative. You have, in all the case, after a few seconds, after you close the clip, you have a shift of, the, of, the, of this curve to the right, so you have a reduction of, of the ventricle and you have an increase in the pressure. So 
This is really against everything that we learned in the past in the literature. This is an example. This was a patient with, uh, with, uh, that we treated. This is post-treatment. You see a, a curve that seems like a normal curve, how we, we are used in the literature. And then we open the clip. And now we see two, three heartbeats later on. The ventricle is already dilated, and the pressure goes down. Two, three heartbeats. Then we close it again, of course. This was just to understand what happened. Now, some few technical issues. One of the most difficult part of, 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 the, of this treatment is a very precise puncture. So in order with this bulky device to, to assess, to, uh, to, to, to reach the mitral valve in the exact spot where we want to treat, we have to have a precise puncture. And how we do it, we, we, we measure first the spot where we want to, to puncture, which is a, a, a distance from, from the mitral uh, valve. So we measure in, a, in functional, we stay ab about 3.5 centimeter. And in degenerative, if we have huge uh, uh, leaflets, we go to 4 centimeter over the mitral valve. We put a marker. We developed uh, together with Philips, uh, we worked in the last two years to synchronize what we are seeing in the echo with what we are seeing in the angio, and now it's also available uh, uh, for, for everybody. Once you measure and you know that you have to puncture there, we put a marker there, and then it's quite easy in fluoroscopy to follow this marker and do a very precise uh, puncture. The same, same system uh, we use also to precisely uh, place uh, the clip. Of course, we see it in, in the echo. You have simultaneous images at the table side. You can manipulate these images live. You can rotate the images uh, with, a, with a mouse. So it's a really huge uh, help in this kind of diff difficult uh, intervention. We put a, a marker, and I think for interventions that are used to X-ray more than TE, it's much, much easier to follow this, uh, this mark and, and, and uh, really reach the spot. So why I'm pro mitra clip? First of all, in selected patients. First of all, because patients survive. Patients really survive this treatment. And also patients that are extremely sick is unbelievable. Patients don't need thoracotomy. And I think nobody really likes thoracotomy. Also the surgeon now. Uh, mitra clip is a beating heart treatment. So you can treat a valve and, so, and see what's happened in the hemodynamic of the patient in real life. You can remove it if you did uh, something, something wrong. The procedure is sa very safe also in very high risk patients. Uh, you, you don't require intensive care after the treatment. The, most of the patients leave the hospital uh, after, after a few days. And the quality of life is improved. We have data on that. The reduction is maintained over the years. There are several data from, from several studies and registry. And uh, despite less reduction than surgery, the patient's symptoms are, are similarly improved. And the costs are not superior than surgery. And this will show a little bit more uh, Giovanni Pedrazzini on the cost analysis. So the conclusion is the surgical mitral valve repair is still the gold standard in the treatment of degenerative uh, mitral valve disease. The mitral clip is a complementary treatment and unlikely to become a standard for elderly and Irish patients. Mitral clip is a potential to become the standard in patients with severe depressed left ejection fraction. But the, the selection of the patient is really something which is very difficult and needs uh, our team approach. I am so proud that the people really follow in our, in, in our concept. These are the hard team. And just to put some, some political things this round, uh, are the people that follow us in this concept in what was already defined the Zurich tsunami. And with that, I would like to thank you. Thank you.